the topic that I was given, as I discussed with the person that was giving it to me, I, I, I kind of picked something else apart from what he was telling me. Because you know when you, tell, when you speak to someone, then they will do the decoding. Decoding is trying to understand what was meant by this. Now, you will pardon me because maybe this is not what you meant, but this is how I decoded it. And uh, I will share from my perspective the same thing that I was given, uh, what happens when a man is worn out. So when I was told about it, I thought I will see how well I can take what I thought I heard with what he thought he said, and then we'll share a little bit. I intend not to be here for too long, but that's not a promise. It can only be a promise for those that are watching because maybe we might come out. Uh, but for guys in here, you might be in for something. But I, I don't promise, but I wouldn't want to be here for, for too long. But I want to share some thoughts that I think are important. I don't know whether you have ever found yourself in a situation you, you are looking for help or it's like you, you, have an, you, you, you are struggling. There is some struggle within you. There are some demands that are on you and for you to meet those demands, there is some struggles within you. Because anytime you think about a one a person, is a person either whatever they were doing, good or bad, has weighed them down. For example, if we think about the story of, uh, of Elijah, a servant of God who had done wonders, but running away from Jezebel, almost depression, getting to, to a place where he wants to die. You know, you prefer death than living. is because of the pressure that was on him now, running away from the queen uh, after he killed the prophet, then you, you, the, the, you, when you think about it, you are wondering, what was the problem with this servant of God? But the pressure was, when you get pressure, sometimes you don't reason like everybody else. You know, you reason differently. I don't know whether you have met someone who is saying, someone wants to kill me. And then you ask, Ako wapi? You know, there are many things that have happened to that person to that level where even what they see is not the same things that you see. A man getting worn out or someone under that kind of pressure. So have you ever found yourself in a situation where you just did not know what to do? Maybe you had a big decision to make. Maybe you are faced with a major crisis. Maybe you have a child that is wayward. You have tried all that you can. Maybe it's a job that you're working and you have lost it. Maybe it's business that you're doing very well now. You, and their bills will still come. You see, if you are in a house, the owner of the house will still come to get rent from you. So the bills will still be there. And you have found yourself in a situation. You don't know, you, you don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. In other words, I would call it what to do when you don't know what to do. That maybe could be a better, a better topic. What to do when you don't know what to do. You're, man, I tell you, you can be pushed, you don't know what to do, and you don't know. Yesterday, I was coming from Mbea, Tanzania. I had gone on Wednesday. Going, to me, was a bit easier. Because on Monday, Tuesday, Monday I think Monday or Tuesday, I went for COVID test, and my certificate came on Tuesday. So I had it. And I thought, have you ever carried something and you think, Somebody seeing it will marvel. I'm okay. But not in Tanzania. You land, we all queued. 
two planes had landed. We all queued and had to be done another one. It's called rapid something. A quick one, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. He was just here. So I thought, when coming back, it will be 10 minutes. But then when I landed in Bear, I was told, do your test tomorrow, Thursday, and do it early, because here it takes more than 48 hours for you to get now the real test. When I was leaving Bear at midday, I did not know whether I would get a certificate. And I yet I wanted to come because of my flight was in Dar es Salaam and I had to pick it. Anyway, with all what was going on, I have a problem, but I don't know what to do. I don't know anybody in Dar es Salaam who can help me. So it is like either I will look for a hotel or something. But thank God when I landed, I got it. That it was some minutes to two. Now getting it, you think you will go with your phone like we normally do here. You go with your phone and the officer says you are a good man. You show them, they tell you, go print it. We need a copy that we can stamp. Anyway, the thing is, you, you, you find yourself, you, you, you don't know what to do, but there you are. And yet, at those points of time, what do you do? Because that will be the question that somebody is trying to ask. I'm tired, I'm sweating, running up and down to get it. And this reminds me of this young man. I think he was 19. And he was in a highway like Vika Highway where there are eight lanes. You know there are some places where there are eight lanes, some places there are ten. In this highway, you have six and then you have one. Or you have two, two, and then you have six, you have ten. Some places you have eight and two, you have twelve in this highway. So he had a, a mechanical problem on the highway in some of those countries that um, have those roads. And with the problem, and those are the days that you don't have, F, you don't have a, a mobile phone. So the question is, what do you do? Nowadays, Google it. You Google, you know where your help is coming from. Those days, you have to look for a coin booth where you put coins to call. So he had a problem, and he looked up, he saw like there is a college somewhere, so he thought, I'll go to that college, i see whether there is someone who can help me, but it was on a Sunday. So he crosses over from the first four lanes, he jumps over to another four lanes, and then he jumps another fence to get into that compound, and fortunately there was nobody. Then he calls the 911, and by the way, I discovered 991, even in Kenya, works. You just call it, it works. But I will tell you what I learned the other day with the same. So this guy jumps and he calls, and the police officer on the other side says, we want to help you, and we can help you. But you have to tell us, where are you in terms of poles? Poles. Uko kikingi nambangani. He said, I don't know. Then the guy, the police officer on the other side, then I cannot help you. So he has to jump again on the fence, go across the four lanes, na vehicles in a pita, see ati kwamba zilisimama alipo fanya hivyo, and then you jump over ile ya katikati, then another four, and then see the pole where you are. So he found the pole, and then he had to go back again, to go and back again and call. And then when he called, he is told, help is on the way in the next one hour. You are 19, in the middle of nowhere, and then you are told help is coming. You are wondering what will happen. What to do when you don't know what to do. A week ago, I had an accident. Not me, my daughter had an accident. And I went to help. So I called the number. And then they are also asking me the same. Where are you? So I give them the story. They say, where are you? On the side of Winds Roundabout, which side are you? Now, Siniko Tu Hapa. Which side? Because at Winds, one side is Kiambu, the other one is Nairobi. 
at winter. Very interesting. So I say, well, uh, if you are coming from Ruaka, um, before you get the roundabout, they say, well, ni mtu wa kiambu, goja wa msaada itatoka kiambu. Then I ask, madam, she was a lady, jinalako, madam, I'm an officer. You know, that's how our officers, wana kasirika kata tufitu tudogo, tunejina tunataka kujua, I'm an officer. What to do in situations like those? You have a need, but you don't know what to do. And those are the things that bring us, those being worn out, when that kind of thinking in your mind. Here I am, I have a problem, but what do I do with my problem? And I want to read a text, and I, will, uh, I kind of quote a few others along the way, but we will look at a text. Because what was going through this person is the same thing that can happen to you, or maybe is happening to you. The situation you find yourself is pushing you down. And we know COVID came, and some people are making more money in COVID than any other time. But we also know COVID came, and some of us cannot do what we used to do. And some of us have even been asked to be at home. Businesses are not like it used to be. It's only in Tanzania. Tanzania, you can only know kuna shida ya COVID in the airport. Outside, hamna. Even the crusader was preaching, hamna. Watu wako tu, hawana iyo. Ukivaa wanakuliza, oh, we umetoka sehemu ya Kenya, eh? <laughs> so business there is as usual, mandizi barabarani, kila kitu, watu wanasukumana matatu zinaja, and so on. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 1 to 7 is a story that you all know, but we'll read it and then we'll pick something that, because we're asking ourselves what to do. And the Bible says a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my sons to be his slaves. Now, there was an appointment. The creditors are coming. This lady had tried everything, to what to do. She did not know what to do. And at that point, she was wondering in her many thoughts. Then she goes to the servant of the Lord. Verse 2. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me. What do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. Do a big business. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and pour it into all these vessels. And set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that he said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God and he said, go become a seller. Go sell the oil and pay your debt and you and your sons will live on the rest. Our Heavenly Father, if there is something that we can pray for this afternoon is that you speak to us using that experience of that woman so that our lives, when we feel weary and trodden upon, when we feel like we, we have we, want, we don't know what to do in a situation and circumstance that we will find what we can do by reading, by going back to the scriptures and learning the principles that help this woman to become an overcomer. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. You know, I'm speaking to people that God will have to make you an overcomer. He will. He has promised. He will do it. But there are certain things that you and I ought to know and ought to do. This woman had 
a real problem. A real, real problem. You see, for you, I don't know what you do, but for me, when I get some of this situation, I feel desperate. In fact, I wonder if I'm going to make it at all. Sometimes you get to that situation. You're pushed in a corner, there is this situation, and you wonder, God, am I going to be able to come out of this? And you know, immediately you have a problem, you wonder a lot. <laughs> I don't know about you, me, I know my, about myself. If I, I have a loan somewhere, James, what I struggle with is if I'm not able to pay to the, to the, to the bank, I try to sell every cuckoo I have, every dog I have, every pet I have, every car that I have, every plot that I have, I add all of it, and then I still see I cannot pay. Desperate. I, I don't know whether you get to that desperation where you are. Sasa, hinyumba naishi hapa rejuice. Nilikuwa nikihesabu every month na hesabu na hesabu. Nikishindwa, nitafanya nini? What am I going to sell? And I know I'm talking to some people here that would find themselves like me. Trying to, you get desperate. And if you have been there on a desperate road, I bet then you can relate with the story and the des desperate situation that this woman had. But there are a number of things that are easy. I, I like the word of God because it is easy. It is not complicated. Easy. Number one, if you find yourself worn out, if you find yourself in that desperate situation, ask. Did you know all what we need to do is to ask? Easy as it is. Just ask. When I landed in Tanzania, mimi nilijaribu kuingia kwa poto yawe ninashindwa. But there was a lady there nikamwambia mama, madam, naomba msaada hii kitu wazee wale maanalogi tunajaribu kuingia digitu haingi mama sasa mama akanisaidia akaniwacha akaniambia sasa jaza nikajaribu tena ikakataa nikamuita yeye nikasema mama ulianza kunisaidia sikuachi hii inaenda namna gani tena akanisaidia kwanza ilikuwa inakataa email yangu naambia mama weka yako basi basi akaweka yake ikafanya kazi basi mama nimemaliza hapo niende wapi Yani alinisaidia mbaka nikamaliza, mbaka nikaona kweli. We suffer because we don't ask. And because we are wearing suits and ties, we think, uh, itaonekanaje. Ah -ah. Kama hujui njia, uliza. Usikubali kupotea. Kuna watu upotea mbaka usiku wa manane, baru wamepotea. Na anaona watu wakuuliza. Wacha maringo. Uliza buwana. Utapereku jela. Kama unadeni ya mtu utapereku. Uliza. Uliza mtu ufanya nini? Huyu mama aliposhindwa kabisa alienda kwa maombi. I, you know, I was praying with someone in my office and as I prayed, I, I said, it is this altar that fights battle for us. Therefore, let's evoke the power of the altar. Let this altar go fight battles for you. That's the kind of a thing that I, it's good to know where to go when you have a challenge. And for sure, this lady knew where her help comes from. I don't know whether, do you know where your help comes from? If you do know, then when you feel so low, don't allow yourself to get to depression. Ask for the way. Ask for help. What do you do with a situation like? And she went with that situation. So what we discover in that text is this woman was caught in the net of life's creditors or life conditions she's in the midst of a, of a crisis she's coming face to face with the challenges that were there and you call it circumstantial hardship and crisis one thing is clear she does not know what to do so she goes to the servant of the Lord and asks so I want to say this to you my brother feeling like the world has come to an end. The first thing you need to do is ask. When you don't know what to do, ask. Look back at that verse and see what the Bible says. There is a verb there. To cry out. She cried out. Here, it literally means she was appealing for help. Help! 
here I am. And it occurs eight times in 2 Kings. And almost every time it, meal, it means to appeal for help. I'm crying out. says, God, I need you to come to my rescue. God, I need you to come to my aid. In coming to Elisha, the prophet, she is in fact seeking out God himself through Elisha. And she's saying, I need help. We know that her husband feared the Lord. But her husband was in the ministry. She was a, he was a good man. But he had died. So she, she comes from that background. She knows even her husband used to seek the Lord. Her husband is gone. Yes, she is asking. She is pleading. She is crying out to God. You know, let me tell you, brother. If I came to Chitala's house and he's eating fish, a big one, na ugali mlima, ama nakula ikuku, na ugali mlima. And then I tell him, Ken, kwangu hakuna chakula. I want to believe Ken will not continue eating. He will cut the fish into two, the mulima into two. If he continues eating, then I will know we are not in fellowship. Ananionesha tu vile anaweza kula samaki na kutoa mifupa ya samaki. What I what I'm trying to say is this, brother, if you get to a place where you cannot you have nothing to eat, stop any one of us. Just tell us. Nataka unga. Ukwani ni aibu gani mwanaume kusema nataka unga? Wa mama ndio wabebagi unga. Si tunabebaga unga bila hata kuweka karata. I know some of you. Mimi nikiingia supermarket. Na nimenunua makaratasi mara nyingi. Saa ingine ninasema usinifungie. Nani ajui hii ni jogo? Nani ajui hii ni elento? Nani ajui hii ni maziwa? Na ibeba tunatoka hapa tu <laughs> quick ma tunatoka na mizigo yangu tu. Na, 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 na kama ilikuwa kwa troll na beba na troll naenda nikitoa kwa What I'm saying is learn to ask. Just learn to ask. Just learn to ask. Don't allow yourself to get into depression. Ask. Dugu, mtoto wangu haendi shule, wako ameenda. Sasa wewe kama wako ameenda na umelipa furu na umebakisha 2000. Bwana, usinikopeshe nipe. <laughs> you know, serving the Lord is, is so good. Serving God is so good. And I normally say, sometimes a person will come to you praying for them, like when we used to pray for people here at Raphael. Tunashika watu mikono, anakuambia, yeye, anaomba mungu ampatie ngiri moja. Na uko nambiri kwa mfuko, na hata ujuu unataka kuzipangia nini. I normally say, mungu anakuambia nini? Kwa nini ya mikuja kwako? Kwa nini ni wea li time? Kwa nini ilikuwa na mnagani? Muambie, umuombe, na kwa sababu utaki watu wajue we ndi unapeanaga pesa. Unajue unaweza maliza alafu ingie kwa kimkua mpatie. Alafu mwingine ajue, oh, yule ya kikuombea, anakupeaga thao. Ni kuchukua details hake na kumuambia, by the way, before you go, we can pray some more. There is no more praying. Actually, it's answering the prayer. I'm saying, ask. <laughs> like... Again, do come on, make condition you buy and do more jam again. Usij, usij, at your number story. Unajua, the cockaribu kufukuzo and yumba. I love Ken and Akulis and Yumbagan. I have an Akwambi, a Paleka, West Apo, Kwakona, Apo, Apo. I love Ken and Aaron and Yumbayak, Wales, Jalibu. You are new Janja. You watcha. To watch your Janja? To watch your Janja. But the question is, ask. So the first thing is to ask. You cry out. And in the eight times in the in the in Second Kings, are people crying out for help from God? I refuse to get into depression when I'm worn out. I'm going to tell someone I don't have a job. I'm seeking this because some of you could have a job. Nawewe kazi usichagwe. When you are looking for food, wacha kuchagua kazi. So in this. Now the question is, do you think this will be the last time or the first time 
that this woman will cry out? No, it is not. It is not even the last time. I cry today, I will cry tomorrow. I will seek help even tomorrow. I see also prophet Isaiah in the midst of a divided kingdom. When Israel was separated from Judah, I see that prophet in the midst of crisis crying out in Isaiah 64. All that you would rend the heavens and come down. Come down to make your name known among your enemies. He is crying out. Verse 1 and 2. He is desperate for God to intervene. I see a blind man in the gospel of Mark called Bartimaeus. He doesn't know what is happening. But when he's told there is some movement and people are going where Jesus is, he cries out. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He cries out. I pray that God is going to help us to know that. Something, something, something crying within me that I need help. I will not allow myself to fall into those situations where I have a problem, I'm feeling depressed, I'm going to call out. To where do you go? To whom or to what do you go when life trembles on you? We run to all kinds of things other than God. We run to the advice columns. We want people to advise us. We go to WhatsApp. We go to Google. We run to other distraction. And in so doing, we actually cut ourselves off from God. My prayer is we will ask God when we have a problem. We will go to God. We will look to God as our only, not our last resort, as our only resort. We will go to him when it starts. We'll go to him in the middle of our challenge. We'll go to him always. The second thing about asking is listening. This woman asked, but the second thing that I want you to know is that she listened. She was so keen with what she... Because what she was told... <laughs> Nataka uwe chokora. That's what she was told by the servant of the Lord. Nataka sai tukiwachana uwe chokora. Enda chukota mishupa yote ili utapata. Alafu enda ugonga gonga nyumba. Mumimaliza maji nipatie chupa. Nipatie hizo chupa. Yani go collect. Now, if, if somebody said Zachary with your suit. Nataka uwe chokora uwe ndoka chukue chupa. Do you know what he will answer will be okay. The answer will be okay. Mungu si anaweza jibu hata nikiwa nimekaa tu. Kwani lazima nipige magoti? Mungu si hata nikiomba kama nimejifunika blanket si anasikia tu maombi. I know some of you, you know. Kwani Mungu kwani wewe Mungu ni lazima nitoke kwa kitanda? You are arguing with God because God will not answer you. Argue with yourself because the conviction are true. You are hearing the conviction yourself. Don't debate with your con Get out of bed. Ati siata nikiwa nimelala center hurio kidogo alafu nikishaamka tena nitaendelea. Yaani nitasema amen niko kwa maombi. Amen nimeanza. Alafu nitaka niseme amen ya mwisho. Wewe unajitangaje? Hakuna maombi unaomba. Are you getting the point? I'm saying listen. Am I Where am I? Am I getting worn out? Am I under stress and pressure on my on myself? Then I need to listen because listening is key. Listen and listen well. Elisha ask her what do you have in your house? There is no time for hallelujah, praise the Lord. You know, I love the Lord Jesus Christ and we have been surviving. No. The answer, it is a quick one. What do you have in your house? And the lady just says, I have something. I have something. And I want to say to you, when you listen well, then you can answer well. Because nobody has nothing. I wish... 
We had no barakoa to turn around to our neighbors and tell them, you have something and I know. Because the tendency, the tendency is every time somebody has a need, you say, I don't have. That's not true. We have something. Listen and think. He is not asking you whether you have oil. He is not asking whether you have money. He is asking, what do you have in your house? If there was oil, say it. If there is flour, say it. If there is nothing, say it. The thing is, be honest. Listen and so that you can be honest. What is God saying to me? I'm in a, in a situation. I have asked for help. I have to listen. What is God saying? Because it is when I hear then, I will respond positively. That phrase, small jar, is important. It will be the equivalent if we would have said, Nikale kamafuta tutone kidogo tu kijiko moja imebaki chini ya jaa ile. Kijiko moja tu. Nikitoa hiyo, bas. Hamna, ni hiyo ndu imebaki. Kidogo sana. Instead of asking her to bring the oil to him, do you know what he's asking her to do? He's asking her to go around to her neighbors, pick uh, bottles and jars and everything that can contain oil. Now that is her responsibility, not the servant of the Lord. And I also want to tell you, when she was told to do that, she was not told what was next. Hakuku ati vile atafanya pana, ni ujaze nyumba yako iwe na michupa, na mikebe, yote umeokota, umejaza kwako. Alafu anarudi kwa servant, anasema, sasa zimekuja. Sasa nambio, rudi, na sasa ukirudi, ujifungie. You know, sometimes I, I wonder, why is God saying nijifungie? Ni kwa sababu kama ujifungi, if you don't cut off everything else, you, there is a tendency for you to get tempted. When you go to pray with your phone, hiyo tunasemaga amen nayo. Iwache mbali. Afadhali wende ukaseme amen ni badai. Kwa sababu, ai, kwa nini yangu tu? Ukienda hivi unawana, ruto, nini? Hey, it's interesting. I'm a writer this. I'm a, you know, I'm a ndege imianguka. I'm, I'm a niangu tu inalataka hizo vitu yako. Yako. Unajua yangu sijui kufanya vitu mingi. I have to tell them to remove them. Kwa hivyo yangu nikifungue inaniambia tu story hizo. What I'm saying, jifungie. If, if you have asked the Lord and you have listened to him and he has given you instruction, go lock yourself. Now when she locked herself with her son, the Bible says now she was given instruction. Why do you want instruction first? Mimi nataka kwanza bwana uniambie hizo mchupa ninaokota ni za nini? Ehe, alafu niambie nikishaokota then kama sio sasa nataka sasa hivi uniambie muujiza wangu uko wapi? Yaani <laughs> Why do we miss God's miracles and blessing? in the 21st century is because we want to argue like a man with another man. But he is God. Hear him. Listen to him. You have asked. Si wendi umesema unashida. Sasa msikize. Kwa sabu wengine utambiwa uuze miwa. Utafute wirubaru, ununue miwa. Lakini kwanza utauliza, nikininua miwa. Miwa moja. Nikatakate. How much am I going to make? Sasa ukianza hizo story, utakosa mujiza wako. She listened and she she was able to to get a miracle. Because when she closed herself in, But I should say a couple of things about listening. First of all, the problem isn't an issue of whether God is still speaking, because God is. In fact, he is still speaking even now. God speaks to us through the testimony of other people, through the testimony of the scripture, through the witness of the Holy Spirit. God speaks to us through men and women, servants of God. God speaks to us through situations that comes and God is still speaking. So the issue is, is not whether God is still speaking. God is still speaking. 
So the question is, will we listen? The second thing that I also want to say is this, about listening. There is a difference between listening and hearing. One time we are, we are watching uh, soccer, black and white. Hapa kwa zamani, likuwa naka black and white. Tulikuwa tunaangalia mpira. Alafu, nilikuwa nimetembelewa na ndugu moja, alikuwa elder hapa. Na kwangu kulikuwa na simu ile ya nini. Na mama, mke wake alikuwa mbali. Kwa vya kampigia simu, tukua nae pale. Sia kachikuwa kichua simu. E, kukia wana hata, habari ya huko, mpira ukaingia. Akasama, goal! Ay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Eh, eh, ate, na ye yule akamuambia, kumbe unisikizi unaangalia. There is a difference between listening and hearing. Have you talked to someone and after have some time you ask them, what did you hear? Then they ask you, what? Because we are so busy that I could be talking. You could be talking to me, James. And I have already gone to Mombasa. I'm in Mombasa doing some things there. So you are asking me, and I'm only saying yes, yes, yes. I think it is good for us occasionally to ask, Nimesema nini? Hasaza nini amba mumeoa? Aye. Sekunda kuwa na mastori. Unaweza peana story. Kumbe mama alikuwa naosha mtoto. Hata kama mtoto hajaingia kwa karai bado. Mawazo yake ilikuwa imeenda kwa karai. Mawazo yake ilikuwa imeenda jikoni hata ugali ishaiva. Hata kama hajaweka ma- maji. Lakini umempa story nyingi. Umempa story nyingi ati sijui nini sijui kanda wapi. How do you know? You know it every time you pose a question and you discover they are asking heburudia hapo tena. So there is a difference between those two, listening and hearing. We hear, but have we listened? Have we got what the meaning is? Have we gotten the real meaning of what has been shared? Listening and hearing. But I also want to say this. There is a connection between listening and obeying. You cannot listen and not do what you have heard. Unless you are just hearing. If you are listening, because every time there is listening, there are some instructions. And it is in listening that you will hear what it's saying. The, the word in Hebrew is Shema, which is often translated as to hear or to listen, but it is also translated as to obey. When God says in Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4, Hear, O Israel. He's trying to say, Hear and obey, O Israel. Obedience is key. Hear and obey, man of God. So in a sense, God is saying to you and to me, when we listen to him, he wants obedience from us. He really wants us to obey him. So what what other insights do we get here? Listening, that this widow was listening. The woman is faced with a decision. It is a decision she must make, and it is a decision we must make as well. Will she decide to hear and ignore, or will she decide to listen and obey? And she listened and obeyed, and there was a miracle. There was a miracle. Are you listening to the voice of God in whatever situation you find yourself? Are you listening? Are you trusting God's divine instructions? Are you listening, really listening? Not just hearing, but listening. What do you do when you don't know what to do? Because that's what we are saying. Ask, but in asking, listen. Number two, trust. This is the final thing that I find in that story. Trust. You trust. Look at verse number three. Elisha gives her instruction. She listens to them. Then she leaves him. Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. Gather as much as you can. She went. She just listened, got the instruction, then left. 
The text goes on to say that she did exactly as he said. She trusted the word of the prophet of God. Not only did she listen, but she trusted that somehow in the midst of his divine instruction, that she is, although it never made sense to her, following God was still the best way forward. She knew that. Following God is still the best. It doesn't make sense. Sasa sasa mafuta niko na kidogo. Sasa huyu jamaa ameniambia niokote vitu. Sasa hata niambii nikiokota alafu. Nitakuwa mtu wa kuuza machupa. Chupa na ndebe. Chupa na ndebe. Is that what is going to happen to me? But she trusted that man of God. Because all what she needed to do is after collecting all to go back to the servant of God and say I have done it. She trusted so after she collects the vessels, Elisha tells her to pour out all that she has. Now that is where the miracle is. And I normally say when you start pouring, don't stop. Because the miracle is on pouring. Don't stop. Keep on pouring. Keep on pouring. Because when she did the last, Atamafuta Elisha. When pouring starts, Let's do it until we get the miracle that God has for us. There is no telling what God can do when we ask, then we have listened, and then we trust him. There is no one, no one who can tell you what God can do. It might take a little longer, but God will still come through. There is someone who has written a book called A Little Pot of Oil. And he says this about it, and I quote, Sometimes it takes a crisis in our lives to test our faith, to show us the limits of our own strength and the sufficiency, the sufficiency of our own strength and the sufficiency of God's provision. I want to say that again. Sometimes it takes a crisis Corona crisis, a loss of job, a loss of business, some misunderstanding here and here, you cannot pay this bill and that bill. To test our faith, to show us the limits of our own strength and the sufficiency of our own strength. Limit and sufficiency of our own strength. And the sufficiency of God's provision. Because when you cannot, then God does. But we don't learn, learn that lesson if we just sit around and wait for God to take care of us. You know, we have to do something. We have to step out and pour out. Trusting that the Holy Spirit will fill us and give us what we need in our life to continue in our life. So it is important. Some of these things you have to get out. When the church here was small, I used to do printing. And I know I've said that. Printing. Because the allowance was not enough. And um, I was staying in a house that was 1,200. And the promise of God was 1,520. It was enough. And I've, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. But I had God tell me, you cannot sit here and cry with your children. You have babies. They have to go to school. Yeah? Do something. So I went to something and I discovered if you buy A1, you can cut a lot of A4s out of A1. A rim of A, a rim of A1. So I, I did printing. And I also looked for clients. I had five clients only. Five. Nakuru, one. Eldoret, one. Kapenguria, one. Kitale, one. And Kakamega, one. Five. And they were having crusades every month, those guys. I'm pouring. I'm pouring. The day I stopped, they stopped the crusades. The church had to wake up. The church woke up. So I, I don't do that. It's not bad business. No. But then I tell myself, if I was wise, because I would still be doing it. Singia, watcha, Nicoletta too, 
mikwebe niendelee kuja kuja sasa ikija tunaenda tunafanya biashara ya ningekuwa printer moja ambaye ni sugu sana ninauza mashamba sitaki kuacha nimegundua sasa kujaza unaweka kando nauza kama chamba ya na ninauza moja sasa hapa hapa ilikuwa ina ina ya farmers choice hapa walikuwa wanaweka nguruwe pale kama huko umes, umesikia sikieni leo hiyo shamba na ukitaka ploti unione wacha maji mafuta iendelee kumwagi because i know the day i will stop hiyo biashara eh, lakini saa hii bado ikija tuweke kando ikija tuweke kando trust so it is easier to trust god when the weather is great when everything is perfect when there is no storm raging when everything is well it is easier to trust god when life is flowing it is easier to trust god but i pray that you can trust god even when there are some challenges of health whether there are some challenges of finances whether you feel low that you can still trust god trust him trust him trust god let's trust him because when we trust him he's going to give us that which we want and i i feel like i want to finish and i want to finish it this way someone went to canada ontario canada in a bank alikuwa amesukumwa na shida ya fedha kaenda na bunduki kaingia bank laleni nyote vile mko wakalala wote akaiba 6000 dollars lakini alishikwa hakwenda mbali na akafungwa miaka 22 and a half kwa sababu hakuwa mtu alitisha watu tu lakini akapata si amefungwa wakaangalia bunduki alikuwa nayo ni ile inaitwa antique ukisikia kitu ni antique ni kitu ya bei sana wakauliza hii antique ni pesa ngapi wakakuta ilikuwa ya sijui ya 19 something long ago ilikuwa 0.45 revolver na the market price that time is that antique was 100,000 US dollars ameiba ngiri ngapi alikuwa ameshika nini some of you here oh god help you you are holding so much or you are allowing pressure to put you so down and yet we so it is like what do you have the woman was asked i have oil kwaja and god is asking you what do you have some of you are very good in various things take that to the lord mwambie mungu mimi sina kitu isipokuwa technician na umwambie ni technician grade ngapi Uzi, wacha, wacha, wacha story unajua Mungu hawezi mtisha watu wale utishwa ni nyinyi nyinyi naweza watisha at you know me i've gone to technical to do technical things technically and so on alafu unafikiria ni kitu kubwa na hiyo haikuwa kitu certificate ni ya o level tulikuwa tukitoka kule tunaenda polytechnic ili tu, tu, tuwekwe makali sasa ya hizo ma magrade 3 magrade 2 ukipata grade 1 sasa unajisikia but when you go to god simply you say mungu mimi nikipata brush naweza paka rangi sina certificate lakini naweza paka ra umwachie pale don't allow yourself to be worn out don't allow yourself to be depressed ask listen trust what are you holding and i'm sure some of you your life can change and even you back home your life can change or oh, what you what the lord is asking you are you desperate tell him 
ask him for help. Call out, God, help me, and he will. But finally, he's asking, what are you holding with your hand? What are you holding with your hand? Because he's not asking, do you have a PhD? How about MBA? He, he, he's not asking those things. He's just asking simply, what do you have in your hands? If you have PhD, fine. Because he knows what he can do with a PhD. If you don't have it, fine. He still knows what he can do with that which you have. That which you can do. Give it to the Lord. And in his hands, remember Moses had only a staff. The Lord turned it into something else. This woman, that oil only, and the Lord turned it into something else. She became a manufacturer and a dealer with oil. And she sold it, paid all her debt, and she became a free woman. My prayer is that you not allow the feeling that you have today to determine your tomorrow. Because this will come to pass. He corona. Itaisha. Na usikubali, usikubali, usikubali. Ndugu, najua kuna watu wengi hapa. Mumehubiriwa, mukahubiriwa, mukahubiriwa. Hii shindano ni mbaya, sijui inafanya DNA ibadilike. Si DNA kisha badilishwa na yesu tayari. Kwa ni DNA au inakuwa na mdangani? DNA yako isha badilishwa. Isha badilika. Oh! Tena wengine mkitoa mkono kwanza huyu mzee akitoa mkono zile machanjo alipigwa akiwa mtoto kuna zingine zilipota vidonda hata mimi nakuwaga na moja hapa ya kidonda hii What I'm saying is hata hii corona itapi let it not determine our future let it not be the things that will push us down it will come to pass and I'm looking forward to a time when we will remove our corona I mean our mask and have a meal together. Oh, I'm looking forward. Unajua hii kanisa ilikuwa na chakula kingi. Lakini corona sasa hata kukura tunaogopa kukura kukura nira, kulea nira. But we pray that God is going to 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 help us. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, here we are in this sanctuary on this altar. And dear Father, there are some of us that are really going through some very very challenging moments. And Father, we don't want to be naive about it. We want to bring it to you. I don't know where you are in terms of that cry from your heart like that woman. But I'm asking. She asked for help and you're asking for help. But I want to ask you back. What are you holding? What do you have? And if you're holding something in your heart, you have something and you want God to use that which you have, I want you to stand up on your feet. Let's, let's tell God about it. Let's just tell God about it. You're saying, yes, I have this. And God, I want to give it to you so that you can use it. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to thank you, dear Father, for the men standing here in the sanctuary. And those that are standing wherever they are watching us. Because this is the time to stand up and be counted. And dear Father, we are crying out, help! And we know that our help is coming from Zion. It cannot come from the left or from the right. From, it will come from Zion. Our God will answer us speedily. We have come to Mount Zion. Because that's where our help comes from. And Heavenly Father, yes, we, we, we go back to David's life. At one time he says, I will look up to the hills. And then he discovered, where does my help come from? Lord God, help us. Yes, we looked at employment. We looked at our business. But where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, period. He is the maker of heaven and earth. All things are in his hands. And we are coming to us for just a little. Some is finances for business. Cut on a thousand hills are yours. Lord, may you give us some. Silver and gold is yours. Please give us some. We have come to call for help. And Heavenly Father, standing here also, it helps us to know. Like Moses is looking behind, there is Pharaoh coming. He looks in front, there is the Red Sea. But the heavens were still open for him. He looked up to heaven and there was an answer. Lord God, yes, 
doors could appear like closed. But the heavens are still open for the people listening to me in this sanctuary. Where does my help come from? Where does our help come from? Our help comes from heaven. Our help comes from the Lord. He is the maker. He is the maker of the heaven, the creator of heaven and earth. And because therefore, Lord, you are the creator, create job opportunity for us. Oh, give us ideas that we can develop. What we are holding like that woman who had only a small oil, can you multiply it? Can it start working and making more money in the mighty name of Jesus? Lord God, there are some of us here can teach, open doors for us to teach. Some can mentor, open us doors to mentor. Some can counsel, open us doors for counseling. Some, us, some of us can do other businesses. We have drivers here. We have engineers here. We have technicians here. We have people, dear Father, that can do manual labor. And Father, we are standing because that's what we are having. Some of us have big degrees, but we are standing with those degrees. That God, this is what we have. Help us to find, to navigate our way in this season and in this time. Heavenly Father, like Badmoyas, we are calling out, Lord, thou son of David, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord God, now that we have asked, we are opening our ears because we want to listen. We want to listen. We want to listen. And in our listening, we want to obey. And in our obeying, we want to move. And in our moving, there will be miracles happening along the way for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of us have businesses, yes. And Lord God, we refuse the narrative that because of corona business, is not thriving. We are praying, God of favor, that you will favor our business. People will look for us. They will look for our business. They will come and buy from us. They will come and ask us to advise them. They will come for us for consultation. They will come for us in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, finally, we will say, receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. And we will come back to another memo to give testimonies of what you are going to do. Because I can see lives that are going to be changed. I'm, going, I'm seeing businesses that are going to thrive. I'm seeing doors that are being opened in the mighty name of Jesus. We'll come back here to give you praise and to give you honor. Oh yes, we thank you. We know, dear Father, from where we are, we can only say it is done. We can only say it is done. And it is only done in Jesus' name. And we say amen to the praise and to the glory of your dear name. Hallelujah! Amen.